Hi, welcome to the Spine MDT. So what is a posterior lumbar decompression? Uh, perhaps you've been offered this procedure either by me or another surgeon. So the idea of the video is to go over the procedure itself, uh, what it involves, uh, the recovery, uh, and some of the risks, just so you know a bit more about it before going ahead. The video is part of a series of videos I've done on the different procedures I do in the spine. So please subscribe to the channel just to keep updated with any new videos I produce. The procedure is there predominantly to treat a condition called lumbar spinal stenosis. There's a YouTube video on this. Uh, click the link above to look at that video itself. I've also written about uh, spinal stenosis on my website, so please click on the link below to have a further, more detailed read about it. So, lumbar spinal stenosis means narrowing of the spine. It's often caused by thickening of the joints, the ligaments um, that join up the different vertebrae together. And as a result, you get narrowing and entrapment of the nerves. So this is a short segment here of the human spine here in the lumbar spine. This is the front, this is the back. These are the vertebral bodies, the building blocks of the spine. And in between we have the discs, the little cushions that we have that protect the bone to add a bit of shock absorption. You have arches of bone at the back that when you stack up together, form this final canal. And between the arches you have ligaments here um, that often thicken up due to wear and tear and cause the narrowing. So this diagram here looks at a cross section of the spine. So if we were to slice you right across the waist and look up from your feet, this here is the back, this is the front and side to side. Um, this is at the level of the disc between the bones at the front. This is the arch of bone at the back with the joints of the spine here and these together form a canal in this area here that has thickened ligament narrowing down this area here of spinal canal where all the nerves are and the idea of the operation is is just to remove this thickened ligament and undercut all this overgrown bone in this area here to widen the canal so it looks a little bit more like this in this diagram here on the right so the procedure is carried out under a general anaesthetic. You're fast asleep, you're unaware of what's happening to you. Um, you're given a dose of intravenous antibiotics and we give some local anaesthetic into the skin after we've prepared it, draped it, made it sterile. And then a small incision is made in the midline of your back for a single level decompression, which is most of the time. The incision that I do is usually about that big only. So looking at this picture here, again, you have a cross section across the spine. Um, this here is the vertebral body or the vertebra, the arch of bone at the back. This is the disc. These are the thickened uh, overgrown joints and this is the skin of the back and here is the midline. So once we've made the decision we've described using some special instruments I, all I need to do is just retract a little bit of muscle and with the retractors here I can keep a very narrow approach under a microscope where I get a nice view of the back of the spine. And the operation I do there are different ways of doing this some surgeons carry out what is called a laminectomy or you move all of this arch but with a minimally invasive technique what I try and do is is more of a laminotomy which means making a window in the arch at the back of the spine through this uh, retractor set and the and under magnified vision with the microscope I remove a little window in this arch and then um, with some special instruments I can undercut um, this overgrown bit of facet joint here I mean this this picture specifically looks at removing the disc and there's a whole separate video on that for another condition altogether but it's the same approach so I undercut the facet any overgrown bone under the microscope and then remove all that ligament just through that small window at the back of the spine this way there's less disruption to the joints of the spine less disruption to the midline structures that hold that help hold um, the spine in alignment and the amount, the channel that's of disruption it causes to the muscle um, is minimal. All of this is under direct vision and I can see by the end of the operation that all the nerves are free. Once I've finished the decompression, I'm satisfied that under direct vision I can see that everything is nice and free. Then we stop any little bleeding or any oozing points of blood that we can see. We wash out the wound carefully. 
and then it closes up in layers with a special absorbable stitch and a further absorbable stitch that sits just under the skin so that you can't see it and there's no stitches to be removed. For a single level decompression, some patients can go home the same day, especially if you've had the operation first thing in the morning. However, my preference is just one night in hospital. It just gives us a little bit more time to have the physiotherapist assess you properly, um, get you managing a flight of stairs, because that's generally my rule. You can't go home until you can do a flight of stairs, uh, a lap of the ward, uh, and that, that usually some patients can do that in the same day usually by the next day that's when we're able to get all of that stuff done um, whilst at home I like you to keep the wound dry for about seven to ten days or so with the waterproof dressings provided you can still wash uh, and shower with those dressings but try and keep the wound area dry thereafter you can remove the dressing and wash as normal but try not to scrub on the wound or pick at any scabs that may form just allow things to fall off with time for the best cosmetic result and to help prevent uh, infection and just dab the wound dry with a towel. In general I'd expect you to be walking around uh, whilst you're at home. Try and avoid sitting for long periods of time for more than 30 minutes or so and try and avoid long car journeys in that time. And in that period of time the, the physios would have given you a set of exercises to do, just some light stretches to start with. Make sure you do those each day. Um, in terms of returning to work, whilst you might feel better quite soon, my general preference is to wait about six weeks, take about six weeks off. Now you might feel a lot better early on, but in my experience, if you go back, if you go back a bit too early and you're sat at a desk for long periods of time, or you're lifting and doing a bit too much, um, you know, it, it can cause an aggravation of your back pain. It can exacerbate the back pain a bit and just lengthen and slow down your recovery. Because um, you've got to remember this procedure is not a cure as such. We're taking the pressure of, of the nerves, but the, the underlying disease that has caused this is called degenerative disease. It's wear and tear of the spine. You can't really reverse wear and tear. You need to prevent it getting worse and prevent it happening at other levels in the spine. Um, so keeping a strong core um, is really important. And a lot of patients I see sit at a desk for long hours a day, and that's part of the underlying problem. So definitely take adequate time off work uh, in, in order to recover and do the exercises continuously thereafter. Every operation carries some risk. With the spine, there are risks that are not that serious and a little bit more common, possibly in the region of up to 5% or so. And then there are more serious risks that are extremely rare. So with the serious risks, things like, um, if you go on the internet, you might read about paralysis, incontinence, impotence, all these really bad things from damage to all of the nerves that run down to your legs and your bladder. That risk is extremely rare, uh, extremely rare indeed. You can damage a single nerve to the spine. It's about one in 300 cases or so, which can leave you with a transient weakness of part of the leg, but very rarely that can be permanent. Um, there's a risk of infection, which can be just under the skin. That can usually be treated with a course of antibiotics, but very rarely uh, you may need a second procedure if the infection is deep to wash out the wound. Overall, with infections, when a superficial or deep, is around uh, 4%. But any form of spine surgery or, or just being under general anaesthetic for a prolonged period of time and being immobilized can lead to risk of blood clots in the legs and therefore that can spread up to the lungs. That's reported about one in 700 cases. Um, these procedures don't take very long and I try to get my patients mobilized quite quickly and you also get an injection of a blood thinning drug called Clexane the following day. All these are preventative measures. It's about one in 700 or so is, is the risk but very, um, very, very rare indeed. Postoperatively there is a risk of bleeding underneath the wound and sometimes this can cause a hematoma that compresses the wound. Sometimes this will need to be washed out especially if there are neurological uh, signs and symptoms. And in a small number of patients, there is a risk of recurrence of symptoms, either because the adjacent level starts to have the same problem, or at the same level, sometimes instability can be caused. Uh, the segment just generates more scar tissue and more narrowing, uh, which may need further surgery. And this comes back to the importance of maintaining a strong core. These are the muscles that support and surround the spine. By maintaining the strength of those muscles, you can help prevent this recurring. 
Another risk I briefly want to discuss is fluid leak of the spine or CSF leak. Um, the lining, the, the spinal nerves are bathed in a fluid and that's, that's inside this lining uh, called the dura uh, that you see here. That can become quite thin when you've had compression for quite some time. And during the procedure, very small tears can be created where the fluid starts to leak. Most of the time that can be repaired on the table under the microscope with a special stitch. Um, very rarely after surgery, you can get a persistent leak, which uh, needs a second operation. A fluid leak of the spine in general or tear is reported in up to 5% of cases or thereabouts. Um, but the requirement for a second operation is far more rare. So what I've described is a posterior lumbar decompression in the way that I do it through a sort of minimally invasive laminotomy approach. There are other ways other surgeons do it, it's part of its personal preference, um, but also what the different surgeons are used to, whether they're used to using microscopes or not, or this uh, technique or not. Um, I believe there are advantages in this area as you're sparing that midline structure and there's just less chance of instability uh, in the future. Um, I hope you found the video helpful. Please subscribe to the channel uh, for, to be updated about any future videos I do on either procedures or spine care in general. Uh, please feel free to visit us at spinemdt.com or email us or phone us on the number below to see how we can help you. Our goal is to find the least invasive solution that also give you the longest lasting result. Um, the idea of the practice is to have disciplines of all professions of spine care, surgeons, osteopaths, chiropractors, physiotherapists in one organisation under the leadership of a spine surgeon to be able to achieve that goal. Thank you.